In this video, I want to talk a bit about the Masks panel, which is a powerful way to work with masks on your layers. Let's go ahead and open up an image that we can play with. Now, I am going to use the Jellyfish file that is included as a sample image with Windows 7. If you don't happen to have this image, that's okay. Though you may want to look around on the internet for a similar picture, something that has something with some stringy, wispy uh, stuff like hair with a relatively solid background, because it is going to help this example. Now what we're going to do is create a mask, very similarly to how we did in the last video, that allows us to punch out this jellyfish, so we can make him float on our very own background. Now first I'm going to create our very own background. I'm going to take our background layer that the jellyfish is sitting on, double click, and click OK to turn this into its own floating layer. Next, I'm going to come down to my Adjustment Layers button. It's dead center of the Layers panel at the very bottom. And I'm going to click on Solid Color, and I'm just going to grab Black for the time being. I'll reposition this layer to sit up underneath Layer 0, and right now we can't even tell it's there because Layer 0 is completely opaque. Now let's switch back over to layer 0 and we'll start off by creating a mask using the color range selection tool. So we'll go under select, jump down to color range, and what this allows us to do is choose a range of colors to be used as the basis of a selection. If I click and drag the mouse throughout the document, you can see that we're using that shade of blue in the background. And it's a really cool, almost like a, a video-ish effect in, ba happening back there in the background. And you can see as I cycle through each different part, how that particular color range is being highlighted. Now if I click just out here in the blue, you see we're getting this band of color. These are all pixels that have either the same color or something close to it within our fuzziness factor. And as I close down fuzziness, you see that we get almost no selection whatsoever as I increase it that fuzziness begins to increase. You have to be a little careful of this though. I don't want fuzziness to get too high. So I'm going to start off with fuzziness being really low. I'm going to hold down the shift key and that is going to constantly be adding to our selection and I'm going to carefully paint in all of these areas that I know are blue here outside the jellyfish and that's going to make a nice selection of just that blue water area. So we'll click over here and close to the tendrils and close to the body where we're getting all these extra fuzzy pixels. But I'm making sure that I don't actually click on the jellyfish itself because I don't want to select any of those colors. When I'm finished, I can play with the fuzziness value a little bit just to kind of refine things, but generally somewhere around 35 is going to work really well for me. Now we can click OK and I have a selection of the blue area. This is not a selection of the jellyfish itself. It's a selection of exactly the opposite. Now with that done, I'm going to use this to create a vector mask. And I can use this inside the mask panel by clicking on Add Pixel Mask. So we'll drop that down and take a look at what happened. We kept the water and we lost the jellyfish. Now the cool thing about that is that it allows me to immediately show off one of the features of the masked panel and that is the invert button. So I can click on invert and I can invert that out. Now next to this, or I'm sorry, just up from this we have the color range button. This allows us to adjust the color range found within our mask. It's kind of like doing exactly the opposite of what we did to create this mask in the first place, but the interface looks exactly the same. As soon as I click on it, it seems like most of my jellyfish disappears until I start clicking in this area. And each time I click, I'm refining an area within the mask. Now if I hold down shift, I can steadily add more and more area to what I'd like to refine. And I can preview this as grayscale, I can preview it on white, I can preview it as a quick mask, or we can just set it to none and we can see where I'm steadily exposing more and more of the jellyfish. Now if I start to click out here in the water, you'll notice here in my little tiny preview window that all of this stuff is starting to appear white as well, but that's not actually what's, uh, that's not actually going to become visible because all I'm doing is affecting what was already inside the mask itself. If I hit control Z a couple of times to flip back and forth, you'll see all I did was say basically I want to see a little less of these colors out here, so I ended up with a much darker mask overall. Again, it's just adjusting the color range that already falls within the mask. 
They can also refine the mask edge. Before I even show that, let me take a look at these two sliders up here where we have density and feather. You can think of density like a visibility factor for the mask itself. By default, this is set to 100%, which is full visibility. As I start to bring this down, the mask starts to disappear, bringing back some of that water from the original image. Feather, on the other hand, is going to create a softening value around the outside edge of the mask itself. An interesting way to show this off is to hold down Alt and click on the mask thumbnail. And then as I increase Feather, you can see it's almost like a Gaussian blur that's being applied to the mask with a nice slider for the control. Now with that done, let's take a look at the mask edge. And I'm going to leave this set to just looking at the mask for just a moment to make this a little more apparent. First off, we can adjust the smoothing factor, which is also very similar to the blur. We have feather, which is the same thing we saw a moment ago, just a little broader, so it's a lot wider of a feather. We can control the contrast, and if the, really, the easiest way to see contrast is if I bring up smoothing first to create some nice blurring, and you'll notice how we're getting some softening, some gray areas. Then as I boost the contrast, we harden those back up. Now you might be wondering, why would you ever want to do this? Actually, let me hit cancel, and I'll alt-click back on this so we can see our original image. And let's lighten up the background a little bit. Let's choose, well, I guess a, a shade of blue would almost be a little too obvious because we already had blue in the background. Let's do a darkest shade of green so it still looks a little different than it did before. And we'll select our mask and go back into Mask Edge. Now, we have uh, the ability to shift the edge of the mask either away from the current edge, so here I'm pushing it out, or we can bring it back in as well. So it's kind of like expanding and contracting the mask, though I'm going to leave that set to zero. Now, jumping around a little bit, if we take a look at the view mode, this really just controls how, how you want to see the preview. So we can look at this as marching ants, which I find fairly distracting and generally wouldn't do. We have as overlay, we can look at black as a background, white as a background, which is very helpful, black and white, which is very much like just looking at the mask itself. We can see the result over our existing layers, or we can just look at the original layer. Please take a note of these hotkeys, where we can use the F key to cycle through all these views, and we can press X to temporarily disable the view. What I'm going to do is leave this set to white, and at any point while I'm working in the window, I can just tap X and I can see the final result. Now, we have the ability to decontaminate colors as well. What this is going to do is get rid of any excess uh, fringe colors, like tiny trace amounts of color that are still floating inside the mask. And we have a percentage value that we can use to adjust that. Now, the neat thing about having this on is that when you click OK, you will get, a, by default, a separate layer, a brand new layer with its own layer mask so that you can compare that against the original if you need to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn off decontaminate colors. Uh, we will still get our output, by the way, just in case anybody was confused by the way I just said that. The last thing I want to show is edge detection. And the reason I save this for the end is because it is, it's uh, probably not what you're expecting right off the bat. What this is, is a way for you to control where Photoshop is going to be looking in order to process the edges of your mask. So just to show this off, if I go under view, I can switch this to reveal layer. Then switch on show radius, and currently everything turns black. As I start to increase this radius you'll see that stuff starts to become visible. What this is actually showing you is the area that Photoshop is going to be looking. So everywhere that is actually exposed right now is where Photoshop will be looking to perform any edge refinements. So if this is cranked really high, it'll be searching, in this case, most of the entire document. If it's pushed down really low, then it'll only be searching a small area. Now, the neat thing about this is you can expand and contract this manually by painting on additional radius. So if we take a look over here, we have the Refine Radius tool, and this will allow us to expand or contract this radius manually using a paint operation. So it, I can use my left and right bl uh, bracket keys excuse me, to expand and contract my brush. I can paint more radius on here. So if I'm seeing like spots where these tendrils maybe need a little more attention, I can paint over them to expand that radius. Now this is not changing the mask itself. This is just changing again where Photoshop looks to make sure that it's refining enough. If I see that there are some areas that maybe shouldn't be calculated, uh, I can switch this over 
to the Erase Refinements tool, and I can pull these back in. Now, once you're finished, once everything is looking okay, now let's go ahead and switch off Show Radius, and we'll switch this back over to White. Once you're happy with uh, your end result, you can click OK. Oh, I, I do want to show this real quick. We can show the original. So here's what we had before. And now this is what we end up with after our changes. So here's the original. And here's what we end up with after we've made these changes. So by increasing this radius, we've made some adjustments to our mask. And you can compare those before you're done. Whenever you're happy, you can click OK. And notice we now get a brand new copy of our image with its brand new mask, and our original is switched off. So we can do quick comparisons and see which of the, which of the two we like better and throw away the one we didn't want. Now, I was just playing with some values, so as it turns out, I didn't really like the result that I got, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now, we do have some bottom uh, buttons here down on the bottom. We have Load Selection from Mask. This is extremely handy. You can select a mask and click on this button and it'll turn this into a selection to be used in any way that you choose inside of Photoshop. Next, we can apply a layer mask. This will make sure that it will basically obliviate your layer mask entirely, boom, and apply that directly to the layer, but I will go ahead and undo that. And then finally, we have the ability to turn a layer on, I'm sorry, a layer mask on and off with a single click, where in the old school days, you'd find yourself right clicking and choosing disable layer mask. Now you can just click on this button and show and hide that at will. So that is a quick rundown of the masks panel showing you a lot of the refinement tools and a lot of the settings you have for adjusting your masks that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.